light of God within me break forth oh break forth ah break forth light of God within me break forth oh break forth ah break forth as I dream as I dream break forth yeah, as I dream as a dream, as a dream, break forth. Say, light of God, God within me, break forth. Oh, break forth. Ah, break forth. Light of God within me, break forth. Oh, break forth. Ah, break forth. Light. your name and we worship you. We thank you for your manifest presence. Our Lord we glorify you and will exalt you. We are asking of God that your purpose will be established in our midst as it is in heaven as we learn at your feet these few days by your mercy. In Jesus mighty name shout hallelujah. Welcome somebody beside you as a welcome to FOCP 2024. All right, let's have our seats. Hallelujah. I told that God we bless us in this FOCP in the name of Jesus. Uh, we thank God for what God has said to, said to do in our midst. We already have, you know, around. Pastor Radio Gulano from Ibado is around already. I will be sharing God's word with us tomorrow. Uh, likewise, um, we have Papa Lunch Robot from Joss. He's around already to share with us as well. And we also have Pastor Luke Sakanibo. Uh, you will be blessed mightily as he shares with us. Amen. Now, Apostle Lord Gulano is also around. He will join us shortly. So he's coming up after me. So he's sharing with us tonight and also tomorrow. Now, I want us to open our heart, you know, in this meeting and let God really help us. So I want to just start straight tonight by just, you know, sharing the body of the meeting. Now, let's open our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 3. I will give you a title as I continue, but just let's start to give it a title as I continue. Ephesians chapter 3. Actually, we could have been reading from chapter 2 and verse 15 to capture the context of this scripture. But you see from chapter 3, from verse 1. So Paul continued what he was saying from chapter 2. So he said here in verse 1, chapter 3, that for this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you, Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of grace of God, which is given to you all. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words. And then said in verse 4, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. So Paul is talking about um, a certain specific knowledge that he had in the mystery of Christ, which actually grafted in the Gentiles into the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then he said in verse 5, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. So what Paul is talking about here, which is called the mystery of Christ, is mystery in Christ, is something that he said, 
people in times past didn't really access it in a sense. But he said that has been made you know, accessible now by the apostles and prophets. Now, this accessible is just talking about understanding. Because you will see that the prophets actually uttered things from, I mean, uttered words that they declared, but they didn't understand it. So Paul is saying that that which was uttered by those people that they don't understand is not made known to apostles and prophets. He said by the Spirit. He's not saying verse 6 that the Gentiles should be fellow ears of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Wherefore, I was made a minister according to the gift of grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. But then that says that unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Shout unsearchable riches of Christ. So Paul mentioned the unsearchable riches of Christ, which he meant about untraceable riches of Christ, immeasurable riches or wealth in Christ. He said in verse 9, and to make all men see that, I mean, what this fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in every place might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he proposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, whom we have boldness and access with confidence by faith in him. Hallelujah. Now, to understand what Paul is saying here in verse 8 about the riches of Christ, when well, you look at Romans 16, Romans 16, very quickly, and I read verse 25 and 26. Paul said here, now, to him that is of power to establish you, shall power to establish you, shall power to establish you, all the problem in Christians today is that, is that people are not being established in the Lord. And that's why when there's a wind of adversity, people are blown away, not being established by the wind of adversity. Sometimes even a wind of prosperity, you know, a wind of prosperity that blows people away from the Lord. When you're established in the Lord, either winds of prosperity or winds of adversity, you're going to stand firm, rooted, as a mighty tree that cannot be uprooted. Hallelujah. I said that, said that now to him that is, power, I mean, that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. Share my gospel. Now, what he called his gospel is the mystery he had in Christ, unveiled to him, by which he's preaching the unsearchable riches of Christ. I'll take it out. So, what he called his gospel here is what he was saying again in Ephesians 3, verse 8. He now said the preaching of Jesus Christ according to what? The revelation of the mystery, which was what? Kept secret since the world began. But now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophet. By what? So, these special wishes of Christ that Paul called his gospel, the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of mystery that was kept, you know, before the world began. He's saying that it's actually made manifest. Made manifest means that it's unveiled. It is revealed. Are we together? No longer hidden. Are we together? It's made manifest, he said, by the scriptures of the prophet. Now, it's talking about the fact that this that he came into was actually when God unsealed the writings of the prophet. I'm not talking to us. So by God unsealing to Paul, unveiling to Paul, through the writings of the prophets, he gets to understand what he called the unsearchable riches of Christ. I'm not talking to us. I'm not talking to us. But it means that the prophet now, God were told that they did not really understand this. Meaning that when they were altering things that were being injected into the gospel, they didn't understand what they were saying, but they were saying it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can imagine when David was speaking, Lord said to my Lord, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He doesn't know that what he was declaring is what's going to happen after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I'm not talking to us. David didn't know. It was made a statement. If you look at the cross, most of the statements of the cross that Jesus made, they were found in the book of Psalm. My Lord, my Lord, why that's forsaken me? Is there. When they were saying those things, David was not having an understanding of the utterance. Am I talking to us? Am I talking to us? And instead of quote in scriptures, particularly in the writings of Paul, they were from the Psalms and from the prophets. So, Paul is saying here, this revelation we're talking about was unsealed. It means that by unsealing of the scriptures of the prophet, I understand it. Prophetic scriptures understood what is the unsearchable riches in Christ Jesus. And it's a mystery. Shut a mystery. Are we together? So Paul said that. 
And I was saying that, that but now it's made manifest and by the spirit of the prophet, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of the faith. Amen and amen and amen. Now, when you begin to really unravel this in scripture, you will see dimensions to the expression of these unsearchable riches of Christ. What I call it? You're not talking, we say dimensions <laughs> to the expression of the unsearchable riches of Christ. Because what he was joking with me, he said, if they Google a constant word when I'm preaching, he said to be dimensions and expressions. I said, okay, that is good. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. So look at Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. So in Ephesians chapter 1, in verse 7, we were told that in whom we have redemption through blood, through his blood, the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of his grace. According to what? Talk to me, according to what? So, if you get to understand and unlock what Paul was talking about in 3.8 of Ephesians, called the unsearchable riches of Christ, you have to unlock and understand what Scripture refers to as the riches of His grace. As what? Talk to me now. As what? So, this is one of them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then, if you come to Romans 11, Romans 11, you also see riches of His grace mentioned in um, Ephesians 2 7. Now, in Romans 11, in Romans 11, verse 33, verse 33, Paul was saying here in writings to the Romans, Oh, the depth of the riches, shall the riches. He said, Both of what? Of the wisdom and of what? Knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgment and his ways past what? Findings. So when he said both the wisdom and the knowledge of God, so there are two here, the riches of his wisdom. Are we together? And they also have the riches of his knowledge. That means the riches of the wisdom of God and of the knowledge of God. That's why he said both. Both. Are we together? Amen. Both of the riches, I mean both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. All the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. So we've seen that there's the riches of his grace in scriptures. Are we together? This is the of Christ is what we call the riches of his grace. That's what we call the riches of the wisdom of God and the riches of the knowledge of God. Shout hallelujah. I follow me carefully. Now, when you look at Colossians 2, in Colossians 2, just note them. I just want to mention this tonight as a summary of introduction. In Colossians 2, Paul also said in verse 2, Let's start from verse 1. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea and for as many as we have not, we have not, seen, have not seen my face in the flesh. That means I put that I have not seen Paul in the flesh, they only know him by his writings. Now in verse 2 it says here yeah, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding. Shall riches or full assurance of understanding. That's another one. So the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you begin to understand these blocks of riches, you begin to assess with understanding what we call the unsearchable riches of Christ. Are you following me carefully? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let's look at um, Romans 2. Romans 2. Okay. So I mentioned to us the riches of his grace, the riches of the wisdom of God. I mentioned the riches of the knowledge of God and the full assurance of what? Understanding. Here he was saying in Romans 2 verse 4, he said, actually if you read from the beginning what I was saying about it, but we'll say here that despite set down the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering. So Paul mentioned what he called the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering. Not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to what? Repentance. To what? Let us talk to you. To what? Repentance. So you see, this is also one of the blocks that, when properly understood, you capture what Paul was talking about when he was saying the unsearchable riches of Christ. These are dimensions that express what he was talking about. I'll follow me carefully. 
Now, I'm pleased because I don't know how the meeting will go, as God will give different ministers of plan to share from different expressions of their sharing, such that you can go back if some part are not covered by your sitting down with the Lord and the Word to understand more. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a long time I start preaching when we do a meeting, but I think I should preach this one. And that's the one of the major reason. Glory to Jesus. So say to me, riches of His grace, of the wisdom of God, riches of the knowledge of God, of full assurance of understanding, and of the goodness of God. Now, that goodness mentioned is three there. Goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering. They are together. Hallelujah. Now, in Romans 9, 23. Now, this is one I want to zoom on in my sharing this evening. Um, we begin to look at this this evening. So, um, whenever I get to, I feel I should pause, I will pause. There's not in my spirit that if there's time, I will share it in my own sessions. So, hallelujah. Hmm. So, from verse 22, let me read from verse 22. What if God, willing to shew his wrath and to make his power known, endure with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? Vessels of wrath fitted to what? Destruction. 23, even us, who, I mean, verse 3, and I said that, and that he might make known the riches of his what? Riches of his what? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, he's saying the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. On the vessels of mercy. That I can know the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. So if this happens, what will happen is that this is of mercy, they step to the dimension of Dugza, called glory. Are we together? So now Paul said this is the riches of his glory. Now, that phrase riches of his glory appear like four times in the testament. Hallelujah. Now, know that Paul is talking about the seven riches of Christ in relation to the ministry of God's will and the ministry that he has had as a gospel in the Lord Jesus. Do you get this point? Now, open unto my revelation. So now, when you look at Ephesians 1, in the prayer that we pray normally in Ephesians 1, you will see all the issues of glory of Israel and the saints. You will see that there. Ephesians 1, verse 18, let me just read that because of time. 17 says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, shall Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So wisdom and revelation, knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, flooded with light, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of his glory, inheritance in the saints, shout in the saints. He said the riches of his glory of his inheritance in the saints. Hallelujah. I follow me carefully. Then in 3.16, Right praying again, in the second prayer, he mentioned this again. You know, he started praying from verse 13, that for this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in the heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. According to what? According to what? To be strengthened. To be what? This is powerful. He said to be strengthened. The word is kratos, actually. He said to be kratos with dunamis. They are both powerful words for power. He said to be strengthened with might. Might is dunamis. To be strengthened with might. That means what happened to us when we are about to the Holy Spirit. We said you shall receive power. That's what was translated might or as power. To be strengthened with might by what is spirit. In the inner man. In the what? In the what? According to the riches of his glory. Hello. Hallelujah. To be strengthened with might. With might. By his spirit in the inner man. By his spirit in the inner man. According to the riches of his glory. Amen. I'll come back to that in the case, I mean, in in the floor of the meeting. But let's look at this. Colossians chapter 1, and that's where I want to start teaching from. 
So you can title this, which is glory, part one. Anyway, you want to put it. So, we just one. I'm going to read from verse 15 to 27 deliberately. 15 to 27. Who is the image of the invisible God? Jesus is the image of what? The invisible God. He's called the express image of God in Hebrews 1. He's the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him, that's by Jesus, that's by Christ, all things were created. They were in heaven, they are in earth, whether they are visible or invisible. So are things created that are not visible. Are we together? Said they are visible or invisible. Whether they be thrones, powerful, dominions, principalities, powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him, are, I mean, by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church. Who is the beginning? I mean, who is the beginning? Who is the, the beginning? I mean, the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. That is all, I mean, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him, to reconcile all things unto himself by him, I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Hmm. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet no he had reconciled. 22. In the body of his flesh, through death, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If you continue in faith grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have had and which was preached to every creature, shout every creature, which is under heaven. Wherefore I, Paul, am made a minister. I made what? A minister. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the officials of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. Whereof I made a minister. That's for the second time. I, I mean, according to the expression of God, which is given to me. You know, he said this in Ephesians 3. Are we together? We have made a minister, a constitution of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery, shall the mystery. Now, what Paul is calling the mystery things, yes, you go to connect it to the riches of his glory. Is that even the mystery, even the mystery, which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his what? Saints. Me and my friends, that it is revealed to the saints. Are we together? Now, Paul now said in verse 27, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory. Shall riches of the glory? Of this mystery. Of what? Of what? And I said this mystery among the Gentiles, which is what? Christ in you, the hope of glory. So what's the mystery here? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Do you get that? What's the mystery here? Christ in you, the hope of glory. And this is connected to the riches of his glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's very powerful. So all that Paul has been saying and talking about the transgression of Christ, you know, related to this gospel that he came into by revelation. He's saying here that based on the riches of his glory, of his mystery, among the Gentiles, he said it is Christ in you. The hope of what? Glory. Amen. Amen. Now, we say Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's very powerful. Why is powerful? Number one is verse 19 of Colossians 3, of Colossians 1. He said, for it pleased the Father that in him, that is Christ, dwell, should all fullness what? Dwell. Shout all fullness. Now, Colossians 2, from verse 8. <laughs> He said, beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiment of the world, and not after what? Christ. Not after what? Christ. For in him dwelleth what? All the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Do you understand that? Christ in you, the hope of glory, Connected as a stream to the riches of his glory, and that Christ in you, in him dwells. Are you with me? The fullness of the Godhead, what bodily. 
So he's saying that the dimension of this world captured the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, and resident inside of you. Just and follow me. Then look at the application, but just and follow me. Do you get that? You don't get it. Christ in you is the hope of glory. But Christ in you is described in scripture that in him dwells what? Bodily. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. That's very powerful. When you begin to understand that, you begin to see this unlocking here of Christ in the hope of glory. In order to reaches of the glory, from when we say is the Father of glory, that was praying in that Ephesians one, Father of glory, glory, and then you know Jesus is called the Lord of glory. How have you heard that? And then we call the Holy Spirit on the way we the, the his workings in the New Testament. It was described as the Spirit of glory that rests on us. Do you remember that? Hallelujah. So Paul is saying this mystery connected to the establishment of Christ, which is the gospel, is declared and preached among the Gentiles, of which we are saying in the direction of the expression is the riches of his glory. He said it is the mystery that you call the mystery, is the mystery of Christ in you, the hope of glory. And if you understand this, you begin to excavate or you begin to assess, you begin to come into dimensions of the understanding of what we call the establishment of Christ. Am I talking to us? I'm not talking to us. That's very, very important. Amen. Let me read this verse again for somebody who's asking a question there. So I'm asking a question. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. I'm reading verse 2. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to us, what? To you, what? Out of my revelation, he made known to me the mystery. Shall the mystery? As I wrote that for in few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in the other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. He's saying that even though Isaiah might have prophesied, Elijah might have, I mean, Elijah might have prophesied, talk about Jeremiah, he might have prophesied, have utterances. This is was open. Romans 16 told us that by the scriptures of the prophets. But when they have utterances, they were not in understanding of their utterances. Are you with me? Hallelujah. They said stuff that they didn't understand. And God now caused an understanding of those things to be open to the apostle and the prophets, of which Paul is one of those people that was open to. Do we get the point? So now, Paul was saying this here. He said, which in other ages was not made known. That means that there was a time that this was not understood. This was not an available revelation. It was at all times that was sealed. It's not by unity now. It's not by unity. It was at all times, but it was sealed. And that's what happens sometimes that you read the scriptures, there are utterances there, but they are sealed. Are we together? Now, when God unlocks our understanding, we begin to see and capture the frequency of what God is saying in that scripture. So that's what Paul is saying here. Are you following me carefully? Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as this now revealed. So, when he said now revealed, that in this timing of Paul, when he was writing this, it is now revealed. And that became the message of Paul. Am I talking to us? Revealed unto the holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. By what? And I said that the Gentiles should be fellow ears. Shall fellow ears. Now this you the Jews and Gentiles are coming to become the church, to become the holy nation. And he said that of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by, this, by, by the gospel. Wherefore, I'm made a minister. I'm made what? A minister. According to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach what among Gentiles the untouchable riches of Christ. Now that mystery is said to be Christ in the hope of glory, as connected to the riches of the glory. Do we get that? Is that clear enough? Now, to understand it, let me bring out a, a, just an application. One, look at Romans chapter eight. To bring the, you know, when you teach mathematics, you teach it to the audience, to bring it to a particular expression. Romans chapter 8. Let's start reading from, let me just read from, hmm. all right? From verse 8. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. 
Seated as in the flesh, they cannot please God. Now, verse 9, but ye are not in the flesh, but in what? The spirit. It so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Verse 10, if Christ be in you, shall Christ be in you? Christ in you, the hope of glory. If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of what? Righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, when you talk about the dimension of Christ dwelling in you, you're talking to us, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also what? Quicken. Shall also what? He said, shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Amen. Try and follow me carefully. So Paul is saying here in this writing, if Christ be in you, the body is there because of sin. Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth what? In you. Now, this I'm talking about here now is all of the understanding that if you study church history, one of the men of God understood and he brought a major victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we celebrate Apostle Abola? Just celebrating. Amen. Now let's let's continue very quickly. Now understand this is very important. Because if you understand this, that's what I want to say tonight. That's all I, 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 let's just start from there. Now, if you understand this, I'm saying here, don't forget Christ being you. The minister speaks about Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, if you understand this, because the riches of his glory, then there, you, there, there is something I want to you tonight. You know, I put a post online, and somebody says something about it, I'll come to it. Sometimes we say things from a place of our, our ignorance. Now, what Paul is saying is this. This understanding is the workings of the spirit of life. Hello? Which is an expression of the Holy Spirit in Christ dwelling in you. Am I talking to you? In him dwelleth the fullness of God bodily. Are we together? Are we together? Now, is, now, one of those dimensions here is the spirit of life. That's spirit of life. Now, by this spirit of life, is that Jesus was raised from the dead. That's why you see from Romans chapter, Romans chapter 8, the Lord's spirit of life, when Christ Jesus set us free from his law of sin, sin and death. Are we together? Now, he said, he raised Jesus Christ from the dead. I said, this dimension of life can also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Amen. Amen. Now, what Paul is saying is the reason why they express the had in mortal in R28. Now, in R28, R28, how you mean? R28. From verse 1, we began to read, and the Bible says that when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called what? Melita. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness for they kindled the fire and received us everyone because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat, fasting on his hand. And when barbarians saw the venom beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt, this man is a murderer, whom though he had escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffered not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and fed no harm. He did what? Now, what is, if you understand that Romans 8, 11, is that the work of the spirit of life made the venom of the serpent to have no effect on Paul's body. Hello with me. Hello with me. Are we together at all? Are we together at all? This is the dimension of life that we are able to exercise authority over poisonous things that they will not harm us. It's part of the mystery, part of the dimension of life that made the universe supernaturally natural. And that's why this man would have understood this very well and will say, the God man. That's how you put it, the God man. The God man, the God man. Talking about the saints. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He shook up the beast into the fire and fed no harm. Do you understand? That means that the serpent that fastened to him, the veil could not penetrate the power of Zoe that now is being manifest. 
as the Spirit of God quickened the body of Paul. Do you understand? And that said, how be it, they looked when he should have sold him. That means they were waiting for him, that this guy would still die. Or falling down dead. Suddenly, but after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their mind and said he was a God. You don't understand. You don't understand. If you understand, I'm saying this is just a string in the mystery of Christ in me, in you, the hope of glory. When you understand, that's what you can look at and say, ah, he's a God. You don't get the point. Because what has happened, if you happen to a natural man, you'll be dead. I want to get out. I want to get out. So the riches of God's glory is a dimension called the spirit of life. Be manifested by the power at work in you and in me. Am I talking to us? So here, they said, ah, it must be a God. It must be what? And in the same quarters were possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days cautiously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in, prayed, shall laid hands, shall laid hands on him and healed him. And when this was done, others who also had diseases in the island came and were what? Healed. Amen. Now, when we read this, because we have the mindset that Paul is an apostle, go to Jesus, you will limit it to Paul. You know, we have done so much. And you now understand that Christ is in you as a of glory. That you understand this dimension of life and you begin to, through learning from scriptures, unlock the life of God within you. When you lay hands on the sick, what flows out? What flows out? That life swallows up sicknesses. Are we together? Now, this one reason, you will see that having believers that relegate the supernatural of miraculous expression to the pulpit among ministers is an abnormality. It's abnormal. It is what? It is something that you are a carrier of. Are we together? That wherever you go, you as a person, shall that flow to your life. Am I talking to us? Am I talking to us? So one application here is the fact that if you understand this that we're talking about, is that if you begin to touch this dimension of life, it is not only apostles that God wants to walk through. God wants to walk through every saint. Shout every saint. Every saint. Amen. That's the reason for Max 16, that we will lay us on the sick, they will recover. So there's a mystery of Christ in you, the hope of glory. Of course, there are different ways that people want to look at that expression. But I'm saying, in this context, of Romans 8, when you read it, am I talking to us? And that kind of the mortal body is where you see what happened to Paul or to Paul in Act 19. You know Act 19 very well, where they said they brought aprons to the body of Paul. Act 19, verse 11 and 12, I'm correct. And verse 11 says, and God wrote special miracles by the hands of who? Paul. Hands of who? Paul. It's by the unlocking of what is within. Now, I'm just starting with this. Amen and amen. amen. And I said, so that from his body were brought unto the sick, and catches. Get me very well. From his body. Shout from his body. God's life pulsated out. Are we together? And the things that they call and catches and the rest, that what his body could retain. Are we together? Could receive that life that was a post body. Are we together? It's by the working of the Holy Ghost. He now said that handkerchiefs or aprons and this is departed from them and the evil spirit went out of them. That means people that were touched by these things, their deliverance. Am I talking to us? I can't explain this. It's like saying that you're living in some water and there's an unlocking of this understanding in you and you begin to touch the dimension of life and you begin to walk in the frequency of the spirit of life through the dimension of life that they took your shirt. Are you with me? And they went to my doguri from some water. And when your shirt touches people that are sick in my doguri, it begins to happen. Hello? Because in these riches, somebody was taking money. Money is not in my message anyway. It gives you dimension of value that money cannot buy. Is it clear to us? Is it clear to us? Is it clear to us? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Very important. 
Very important. Some of those fathers of faith, they have this understanding. They're not afraid of deadly things. They're not afraid of poisons. Am I, am I talking to you? Because it's like the love of God in you radiates out from like an ambience around you, like a force field. And then as you move, you're impenetrable. Amen. 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 So, lack of this understanding is all the reason why we run Elta Skelter. And what we tell is this. People say, okay, they have read this, they've read the message about this, but it's not working through their life. What I say is this. Most believers don't understand how the inworkings of God can flow through them. And that's why a generation that is long, long to do long, long, um, long praying in tongues is fine. I believe in it. And then, you know, stuff like that. But the issue is this. Well, you do have a devotional life. Shall devotional life? Shall devotional life? But you join this group for prayer stretch. Hello? You join that group for prayer stretch. You join that group for prayer mountain. But you as a person, you do have a devotional life. You are not committed as a lifestyle to a place of interacting personally with scriptures. Are you with me? Are you with me? That leads to an art flow of life of communion. I'm not using the word prayer. I'm using communion intentionally. That in that communion, different streams of prayer expression and flows through. You won't touch this. And that's the major problem. So what happened is this. Instead of us having an army of spiritual believers in expression, we are supernatural, but expressing it, manifesting it, we have a select two that are manifesting it. Amen. And then, you know, when you see riches of glory, what we say about the Lord of glory is that his government talks about a dimension of suffering. Let me read it. That's what I want to, that's what I want to share tonight before, but God said I should not go that direction. I'm talking about suffering. Share suffering. When you see glory, you see suffering around glory. Hello. In fact, the Lord suffered to pay for this to be available. Am I talking to us? Am I talking to us? There's an administration that unlocks glory consistently by suffering. By what? By what? By customized suffering. I don't want to hear that. Customized what? Hmm. May you have understanding in the name of Jesus. May you have understanding in the name of Jesus. So, what I'm saying tonight is this. In the riches of his glory to the mystery is the one called the mystery of Christ in you, the hope of glory. There's a dimension of that that talks about the unlockings of God working to you progressively you are becoming. As you watch with an unveiled face, building the face of the Lord, you are being changed from one level of growth to another level of glory. From those that to those that, that's true. But I'm talking about this dimension of life by what we say in Romans 8 should be effective. That there is a quickening that comes that Zoe is not just resident in our spirit. Zoe pulsates into our soul. And by Zoe, we are strengthened against the life of sin. So the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of what? Sin and death. Are we together? And that by that same Zoe, there's a flow of that that touches our body. That touches our body. And so virtue can flow through you and flow through me. As a reality for the believer. Hallelujah. Is what? This is just a, a dimension in what is available to us. A dimension in what was available to us. And it's very important that we understand it. So, the challenge I want to put to you is this. That having said what I've said now, I'm trying to tell you, as a child of God, are you engaging the workings inside of your life of the spirit of life as a person? If you're engaging it, is it being manifested in your daily activities? Are we together? Are we together? Where this expression of river of God flow to us to impart our environment. Amen. Amen. Now, when you carry what I'm talking about, if you enter a decade business, you're coming to that business begin to recreate the environment. Hello? Hello? You're coming into that business begin to do what? Talk about, do what? Recreate the environment. I didn't say you're putting money on the ground. 
Because spiritually, something begins to happen and begin to change what is decayed to be out of decay. It begins to come into that place. I'm not talking to you guys. You have understanding the name of Jesus. So that's why I believe that strongly, as a child of God, there is a rebuilding that takes place wherever you go to. A desolate place has become a forest. You understand what I'm talking about here? Hallelujah. It can become what? A forest. If you go, I'm talking about here. That's why I take it to another level is that this is what Jonah begins to write, talking about the anointing that begin to teach you. If you come into knowledge, shout knowledge, shout wisdom, which the art flow of it will begin to impart and bring transformation to the environment. Now, because the way things have been taught is that most of us are even looking outside, not inside. We are not looking inward. But Christ's deep of glory is resident internal, is inward. Are you with me? I pray of understanding in the name of Jesus. So I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you. To what I call rise above spectator Christianity. Rise above spectator Christianity. Rise above spectator Christianity. Do we get that? Do we get that? They are plodding. There's a way that I can say there's a, there's a poverty of expression of what is made available to us in Christ because of lack of understanding and because of a mindset that believes that some select few are the one called to walk in these things. Amen. And as I believe, now, I'm not preaching um, this dimension that, okay, you take over all the world. I'm not talking about that. But I'm saying, if you talk to Old Testament to look at a type of it, I'm saying that, like a Joseph, you become a solution provider because of this dimension of life. And I'm saying that, like a Daniel, become a solution provider because of this dimension of life. Am I talking to us? Am I talking to us? That your arrival brings healing to streams around you. Are you with me? Bring healing to stream around you. That where there's death, life begins to happen. Am I talking to us? And as I believe that, if you understand the way this works, you understand why you're not talking about being strengthened in the inner man by dunamis. According to what? The riches of his glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. When Jesus walked the earth, he walked in this expression. That's Jesus' authority and dominion to walk over the sea. Hallelujah. That's the authority and dominion to speak to the wind and they obey him. That's the authority and dominion to multiply bread. There are dimensions of riches that is not based on financial dimension. In fact, in this teaching that we're talking about, finances is not on the table. Hello? Money is on the table. Say money is on the table. On the table. So, because in case you have seen this, I think your oh, economic crisis in Nigeria, the message, oh, we are not talking about money here. Amen? Amen. Money is not on the table. What? Well, in my sessions, money is not on the table. Glory to Jesus. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. But I've said that my understanding of this is not about money. It's not about what? Money. Our money, and I pray you see it in the name of Jesus. Is this the realm of life in the riches of the wisdom of God? God begin to open your eyes. The blessing of an open eye is more than finance, it's more than salary. Amen. Amen. What will happen is that instead of money, we get to actually follow you because you enter the wealth creation realm. When you talk about the power to get wealth or power to make wealth, you have to see. You have to do what? I thought you say that you study Abraham, you study Isaac, you Jacob. They saw. Are you with me? They saw something. Particularly, you know the story of Jacob. He saw something. 
but it's so testable that we're talking about here. So I'm saying that now, for us, in the dimension of believer of this testament is that we have an understanding that Christ is the hope of glory on four many dimensions of life and expression. And I've given an example that I think is very important about the spirit of life. So I want to really challenge you to really say to yourself, after this meeting, no to spectator Christianity. No to what? So you're able to walk in authority. For example, now, you know, I, I, I was reading about, um, someone sent me a report. I was talking about the issue of the influence of deities in the locality. That means the morning, the me go to the locality on people. So some people are doing stuff. Is the deity affecting them? So if you get to a place where there is a demon of poverty, a demon of poverty at work, and start business there, and you are not understanding who you are as a believer, your identity, and we are talking about here, you begin to see your business have the poverty expression of the environment because the influence of the deity is coming over you. But that's wrong. That's supposed to happen because you are in a place of internal power. So the external cannot stop you. You get the point? Because what is working with you is more powerful. You're not with me. I will get to this point. So, so in the first place, if you are a normal Christian, that means somebody is a normal Christian, you don't need to begin to say, listen for where you get. Mm-mm. Because you're a normal Christian, you have come with an ambience, with a force feed. Start to the force feed. Your force feed begins to repel negativity. Do you get the point? Your force begins to attract the right things. I'm not talking to us. So what happens is that by that force field, in working in that environment, your experience begins to change the community. Are you with me? So let me just pause with this for tonight. You know, Paul talked about coming to vision and revelation. But let me leave that. Let's talk about the abundance of revelation. The reason why Paul could write, shout Paul, the letters he wrote, and was teaching things that you, you can't go to those and say, it will be called King's Apostles. But when he was talking about the fact that he that descended was the one that also did what? Ascended. And they talked about, you gave gifts to men. He said, I mentioned apostles, shall mention the prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers. It's based on that working of God in him, that mystery. Because those people are gifts to the body. Hello? A true apostle is a currency in the spirit. Not just favor. Am I talking to us? Am I talking to us? Now, Paul's talk about those dimensions of life. Because by the mystery of Christ, the hope of glory, Paul was being taught. There are anointing you that will teach you and make you to know all things. Paul was being taught. And Paul was not the way that Jesus died. Hello? So I didn't know what happened when he descended. I went together. I didn't know what happened when he descended. He was not there. You know, Paul was an apostle that was not there when Jesus was physically alive. In First Corinthians, was talking about First Corinthians, was talking about Second Corinthians, was talking about the Lord's Supper. He said, as he has received from the Lord. Hello? You know the Lord's Supper? When they were eating, when Peter and Andrews were there, Paul was not part of them. But Paul had an encounter that opened scriptures on the Lord's Supper. And Paul was the one that was showing us that you partake of it unworthily. You can become sick, oh. That's a boy who die. You understand the body of Christ. I'm not talking to us. Paul was the one that gave us all that. But Paul did not read that in the school. That's what I'm talking about. So, one of the mysteries of Christ's hope of glory is that you come to school of the Spirit. Where you are going to be taught of the Lord. So, that's why when you look at this, see, you read Romans, you will read Ephesians, you will read Philippians, no, let me say Romans, Ephesians, and Colossians, and you will see alignment in the writings of Paul. I'm not talking to us. With different language. Because when I mentioned what they call the ministry of his will, it's what I mentioned it. People get to have an understanding that many others know of. That's what Paul was having. That understanding itself is a, an expression of the ultimate riches of Christ, manifesting as riches of his glory, saying Christ is the of glory, manifesting as the riches of wisdom and riches of knowledge. Amen. 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 I want to really understand this. I want my saying this. We should change ourselves where all we have in mind is a Christianity that does not build up. Hello? We used to come to the place whereby we understand being built and being blessed. Amen. 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 
The purpose of fivefold is to build us. So Paul, that was talking about this, wrote so many things that happened by the abundance of revelation. Part of the working of the Spirit of God in you, of Christ's deep of glory, is that opening of your eyes to see. So when Paul began to open scriptures of the prophet, he started to have understanding. I'm not talking to us. He started to see. And then began to write. So Paul began to write things like um, the just shall live by faith. He wrote about it in Romans. He wrote about it in Hebrews. And built definite specific understanding of what he was writing. So as believers, the poverty of the of life will be there if our eyes are open to scriptures. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And lastly, just back to what I want to say on the spirit of life. There's a man of God called John Lake. You know John Lake? John Lake was said to have the greatest healing ever. Shut healing ever. In terms of church history now, in church history, a whole city, Spokane, was declared the earliest city on the face of the earth because of what John Lake came into. A point came that there was a city that had plague. What we say plague now? You know, an epidemic. That was an epidemic. And uh, health workers have tried, they've not been able to do anything. Now, as John Lake was coming into the city, the all God opened their eyes, they saw the heavenly, heavenly space, dark. As he was entering the city, the heaven begins to clear. The dark clearance of the heaven, that means not dark physically, spiritually begins to clear. Such that there was mass healing and recovery. Hello? Because somebody will understand the mystery of Christ in the deep of glory. He stepped into a territory. Life came in. You don't get my point. Without praying for people. You don't get my point? I get my point. He stepped into a place. What happened? By the left, there is a radius of life he carried that affected the environment. That sickness. Uh, because the everybody is a demon. I want to get that. It's demonic. The demons cleared, and so people recovered. Hello. One of the, if you read, read his material, one of the things he was written was that one of the plagues that happened, that was working among earth workers, and they said, should be careful so he will not be infected. He cannot be infected. Do you understand? He was sure he cannot be infected, so he didn't protect himself. Because the solitary owner, when they put the jams on his hand, as he touched his hand, he died. Hello. This is not Paul of art. This is John Lake now. I might talking to us. So I'm saying, we need to come to that awareness. Are you with me? That word, awareness, as believers, to see God do what He wants to do, generation in our environment. And maybe we have an understanding in the name of Jesus. So He had that level of expression. It was said that they have healing homes. Their healing home was this manner. When you come with any kind of sickness, you are not going to live until you get healed. So they have many testimonies of healings. Some people may take 30 days. And what they do, majorly they share God's word with you, pray with you. It's like every time you come, God's life begins to come into you through the sharing of scriptures. That's the testimony that God gave to him. And this man, they had several people got healed. What people that learned from John Lake, Letwaba, I mean, I've never heard of Letoa before. I'm running off. Letoa back came to a place. He has prayed for people. And he became tired. People are getting tired. He became tired. Then the rock is sat upon. He lands on the rock and pray over the rock. That if you touch it, I believe you'll be healed. People are touching the rock, they were getting healed. Hello? You're not getting my point. I'm saying as a believer, you carry life. You're a carrier of life. That there's a place of God's life possessed to your body. Are you with me? This is what happened somebody very close to me. I was in their place and they said that my body came to visit them. And as he entered and sat down, someone who has been sick in the house became completely healed. Hello? And came outside. And my body boy sat. After I had left, for a few months, whoever sits there gets healed. Person who is not sick at the counter. The question is this: Do we think that happened because he's a special man of God? Hello. 
I don't know why I deeper work with God, but I'm saying that this is this. Revelation knowledge. What do I call it? No Greek word. So this evening, in certain this I'm sharing with us, is that we need to we need to look into God and all we are talking here are no riches relegated to the realm of just the needs of the earth. Or relegated to the realms of just say money, money, money. We are talking about the dimension of life that God has given to us in Christ Jesus, where we see the flow of God for the things that money cannot buy. Do you have understanding? So that's what I want to just do tonight. So don't forget, I said this dimension of life, you will say especially to the riches of his grace, the riches of his goodness, riches of full assurance of understanding, riches of wisdom of God and knowledge of God. Hallelujah. And I mentioned riches of his glory. Is it clear? All right, so I and pray. Let's try to and pray. All right, so I and pray, and I'll bring Robert to very soon. Now, I want to sing this song with understanding. I have the life of God in me. I have the life of God in me. I have the spirit of the Son of God. I have the life of God in me. I have the life of God in me. I have the life of God in me. I have the spirit of the Son. everywhere. Where in your school, your normal evangelism, you will see things happen. Where in your place of work, you see things happen. Where you will know as a man that not to die in your hand. Not to just what? Die in your hand. Where you will be called for for consultation. Not because of your physical knowledge, but that you know your coming can change an atmosphere. That you are a person that can change the atmosphere. Am I talking to you? And this is what that God wants to do in our day, in our time. That will understand life. There's a need for a fresh awakening. Zoe. Shall Zoe. Zoe. Our understanding of Zoe in saying eternal life has limited to understand that, that where there is Zoe, it's like a river. That when it touches anything there, they come back to life. As the vision of that is the river. When it touches anything there, it comes to life. I'm not talking to us. That means you're stepping into a hole. A blessing has come. Hallelujah. When you step into where there is death, there is life. When there is darkness, there is light. I just pray the Holy Ghost. Just pray the Holy Spirit. E na no suta na makite botu mati na mati ya na mana malo se E ya mako baka ya di koto suto badi kado siya E proto so pata la bada bado kodo bari ya bada kana bade kene bari ya E la potu so koto sito bate keto sito bari ya Father we thank you Now we thank you. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. So, when I come up next, I'll go to some other applications. That is not just this expression. I want us to be open to all ministers. Shout open to all ministers. Now, the reason is this: when 
one of the danger of meetings like this is when you have a favorite minister. You must have to receive from all. Are we together? Now, we didn't give them a specific topic and have a reason for that. Because God believes the minister in a particular tangent of sharing. So I would not want to hinder that tangent of sharing by limiting somebody to a topic. Are we together? That's why I just say, okay, this is the theme of the meeting. Go pray and then come and share with us. Hallelujah. So I let you read the minister. And I mean that God intentionally made us people that are here in this meeting for a reason. And I have a reason for saying that. Now, what I've shared puts in your spirit, man. But next speaker, be very open. Very what? So, I met um, Apostle God Bola. Well, he said, he said it's 2020. But it was in 